Hello YouTubers, it's Das Gregor and another exciting review on a Linux distribution. Now I want to thank you all for watching my Gen 2 based distributions. I finished last week with Gen 2 in all its glory. There's nothing better than going back to the original that everything else is based off of to see how it's made, how it's done. And if you're ever interested in seeing how Linux is installed from ground up, Gentoo is one of the best distributions to start. In fact, as I said last week, you can even go as as low sometimes. I don't know if they have the stage 2 and the stage 1 tarball, but I remember back in the day when I used to install it from stage 1 tarballs, which meant you pretty much built everything from the bootstrap up. But today is something completely different. Uber Student, the Linux for Learners. Now, Uber Student is a Ubuntu based distribution built for students and teachers and those in upper level education. I have found it to be a really great distribution. My first impression when I first booted up was wow, this is sharp, this is great, this is neat. You know, there's something to say for making things work, and there's also something to say for that first impression of the way it looks when it first boots up. And this one has one of those wow factors built into it. The person who did this did an awesome job setting it up. Now, this is version 3.0, or Play-Doh, of Uber Student. It's running the kernel 3.8.22 I believe of Ubuntu and I'm just gonna read you a short statement from their about page where it says uber student is a free user-friendly Linux distribution for learners for learning doing and teaching academic success at the higher education and advanced secondary levels researchers knowledge workers, lifelong learners, as well as anyone, that's you and me, who just wants a highly polished, ready-to-go computing platform will equally benefit. And believe me, this is a great platform. Yeah. First off, it comes with a sharp look and feel, sound, Bluetooth, network, all of those things were straight out of the box. I'm trying to remember because it's been about a week or so since I installed it. If I had to install extra plugins for the codecs and things, I keep thinking I did, but it was super simple, right up front, and very intuitive. Uh, not something you have to go digging through. Since it has that Ubuntu background, it uses Synaptics, which is very easy to use and I find very user friendly. As you see up here on the bar, you know, you've got your four desktops, your network, your sound, your uh, Gmail, in my case it's Gmail because that's how it set, had it set up, uh, your battery levels, your checks to see if your system is up to date, and it even comes with a th th thesaurus, and your Bluetooth, which I have turned off right now. This is running XFCE, so it's a simpler look and feel than say KDE or GNOME but it has everything you'd ever want. I have looked at other XFCE distributions that were very lacking and this one is far from. This one is great. When we look at what applications he has here, of course you have all your standard applications for accessories and Xkill is always your friend. I wish we had Xkill within a Microsoft environment. I don't know how many times I have an application that's just not running and just frozen and you're like, ah, I want to get rid of it and things are just aren't working, I'd love to have Xkill for that. And if we go through then into the, what I find really cool is he has stuff built into this for just about any type of learning that you'd want to do as well as you know, a little bit of fun too with the games. But I liked in his books area his web apps. You have the Kindle Reader set up for the Linux distribution. You've got Open Library and Project Gutenberg, just to name a few. I know KNO is in there, but I'm not that familiar with it. 
but it looks like here that it says that it's textbook, textbooks that you can rent. Since I haven't been to college for many, 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 many years, uh, it's probably why I'm not familiar with that. But I'd like to say a quick thing about Project Gutenberg. Project Gutenberg is, is a group of people out there who have taken books that are in the public domain and have made them available in electronic form. Just about anything out there that the copyright has expired or the book has gone to public domain, you can find within Gutenberg. As it says right here, they've got over 42,000 books that they've set up. These are in Kindle format, EPUB format, Plucker, if you remember the old Palm OS days, plain text even if you don't even have an e-reader and you just want to read it through that. Most all of them are in English that I've found, but there are some in other languages, so it's always a good thing to look to see what you can find, and just about anything that you'd ever want to see is there. Now one of the exciting things that I saw about this was that, is this a Project Gutenberg Linux application? No, it's not. It would have been really cool if it was, but all that they've done is set up a Chrome browser that points directly to it and gets rid of all of the bars up above to allow you to to go back and forth and look around. It makes it look like it's an application. And this is one thing I find that's really neat about Linux. When you try different distributions, you find out new things like this. I hadn't seen this before within Gen 2, so I looked to see how he did it, how he put it together, and saw how he set up the command line. And I took it one step further then and created this LibriVox option over here that does the same sort of thing. Now, LibriVox, instead of it being written word in an ebook format, these are audiobooks that have been read by people, volunteers, that have taken books and works that are in public domain and read them and set them up so that you can download the entire book or set of books and listen to them just like you would an audio book or a podcast. And I love this because I love to read. And I really love to read things that are free because I hate having to spend money on books and I have a lot of books up in my den that I've read once or twice and guess what? Just like a movie that you buy, you watch it once, it normally ends up sitting on your shelf and you never look at it or read it again or watch it again. You know, music's probably the one of the few mediums I think that we listen to over and over and over again. And maybe it's because most songs aren't half an hour to two and a half hours long. <laughs> but LibriVox is an awesome location. As I bring this up here, you can volunteer your time to help read chapters or full books. Or you can look in their catalog and find just about anything that you'd look want to look for. For instance, I'm a big fan of Jules Verne. So if we look up Jules Verne here, which I've already looked up before in my pre one of my previous video attempts because I think this is take three or take four of this video because I kept messing up the video. And if we do a search, we find that here the very first option is a German version of Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. We have a Dutch version of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And then we have some English, Arctic, the Arctic Mystery, Around the World in 80 Days. Uh, just on and on and on. Don't get discouraged if you're an English speaker and you're thinking, oh man, this is all German, French, Dutch. No, there's plenty of English as well. It's just, it's really nice to see an international group of people all doing something that can benefit everybody in every language. English isn't the only language out there. There's a lot of others out there, and it's great to see that there are volunteers from France, Germany, etc., that are wanting to put their little bit into this to help make this project great. And as I said, just about any book you could think of, H.G. You know, Wells, Dumas, a lot of Shakespeare, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, for instance, Frank Baum, you know, the writer, the the author of, of the Wizard of Oz series. I have read every single Wizard of Oz book. I am a big fan of Frank Baum. And it's really cool to go in here. And, he, and most of his first books, they're up to his death, 
are all in here, including those that he tried to branch away from the Wizard of Oz series and create other books. Great place if you like to listen to audiobooks and you don't always have the time to sit down with a good book. Of course, if you find it here, you're also going to be able to find it or should find it in the Gutenberg project. So there's always a way to follow along or read it if you don't want to listen to the audio version. Either way, these two resources are awesome. And I wish that the LibriVox was part of his setup here as well as the Gutenberg project. But either way, it's a great thing to think about and look at. As we go further along within Uber Student, we see that he has LibreOffice. Now I want to mention that in his LibreOffice he has branded the LibreOffice. What that means is that it's actually Uber Student version of LibreOffice and it has a look and feel for Uber Student. I'll give you a, a quick demonstration here. If we open up um, LibreOffice Writer up here which shows a shortcut for it went very fast. It went way too fast. I wonder if the help will show it. No, drat. Do you hate that when things go way too fast and you can't see it? If you had looked, let me try maybe a different one that I haven't tried elsewhere. Let's try data and try uh, calc. See down here how it had liberate office? Boy, my system is just way too fast. You know, every time I want something to go quickly, it goes like wildfire. Other times, you want something to slow down so you can kind of give a demonstration, and boom, it's gone, it's there, it's going fast. Well, either way. The point is that even in Gen 2, you can use the use flag branding, and it will give the Gen 2 branding image to the applications. And you can no longer freely distribute that version um, and call it what it really is because it's been branded for the distribution. It must stay with the distribution that way. I could go into that a little bit more, but it probably gives you a, a brief description. But if we go further along, he's got things like Mint, and then each one he has resources. Like here's some resources for for uh, flying, book, renters, um, all kinds of other stuff there. Presentation software and and making up your own things. And I love the fact that he even throws in a lot of times these web applications because sometimes it's nice to know that there are some of those that are out there without having to go searching for everything. Research and writing, study aids, uh, computer science, mathematics, excellent, excellent tools. And he has them all there. Now you get tired of doing your studies, you get tired of writing your papers, you need a break, you need to go do something. Well guess what? He's also giving you all the games and different versions, even some strange ones. Like I saw that Pepsi uh, pinball and wanted to see what it is. And it, it's a link to a Pepsi P internet pinball game that's free to use and, and fun. It's, I don't think it's Linux. I just think it's a web-based uh, game. But that's okay. He's, of course, got your other stuff, Sudoku. I saw Cut the Rope, and I looked at it, but I didn't see how it could be run within Linux. I'm not sure if that's more an advertisement or not. But it was just interesting to see all those sort of things there. In graphics, of course, he's got the GIMP. Scribus is a really cool um, publication software. Inkscape really helps you out with images. You know, just excellent things. And, and also, you know, we get free applications or open source applications like the GIMP. And you go, how do you use this? How, what do you do? You know, the GIMP is going to be as complicated as, as its Windows version with Adobe Photoshop. Well, here he's included documentation for the GIMP workbook, Cronking the GIMP. These are open source free resources that you can use to learn how to use the GIMP. And it's an awesome thing that he's included them all in here. Of course, you got your picture manipulation, your utilities for different pictures and things, and viewers, of course. We go on, he's using the Chromium web browser, and of course he has things for... Uh, I'm going so fast. <laughs> he's got things for, for Skype, for instance. I installed that. It just was the Skype installer. Uh, tried it out, see how it would work. Instant messaging, email. It's all there. It's all great resources to have there. As I said, he took the time to put this thing together, build it, and it's excellent. It's great. 
Um, of course, I'm trying out Kazam right now to do my screenshots, so this is the third or fourth attempt. I've not used it before. I think I might have installed OpenShot Video Editor in case I do do some editing. I like doing that. I installed close to GUVC View, I believe. Other than that, everything else is here. Handbrake is a great tool for converting video files. Of course, has video players such as VLC is my favorite. That's already on there. Of course, all your system tools for the XFCE uh, GUI interface. All in all, Uber Student is an excellent, well-rounded, beautiful distribution. I won't knock it too much for being a Ubuntu flavor, <laughs> but it does work well. I'm trying to remember if there are things I might not have said in this video that I might have said in the other videos that I kept attempting and having to blow up, but I think I might have mentioned uh, it does use synaptics based upon the whole Ubuntu system. Synaptrix is a very good user-friendly installation utility. It, it's very simple to upgrade packages and get those things running and working for you. It's been very stable and I've been very happy with Uber Student. So I'd like to suggest that anybody who's looking for a beginner level OS of Linux that has some really great tools. If you've got a student out there or a child that needs to be able to use a, a good flavor of Linux for, for all that, this is a perfect opportunity to be able to introduce that child, even teenager, to, to Linux and and have all the tools that they would need right off the bat to be able to still do their schoolwork, do their research. I'm surprised it doesn't have a Wikipedia type uh, application on here, but it would be very simple to create. Uh, a couple of other things, but all in all, very, very impressive version of Linux. And everything seemed to work really well right out of the box. Well, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Hopefully, if you're watching this, that means that I was successful finally in getting everything to work. I try when I do these things not to use virtual box, not to do virtualization of anything. I try to use the tools that are mostly within the distribution. That's why I'm trying this out with Kazam, because I want to see how well it works out of the box. If this fails, you're not going to see it because I'll have redone this for the fifth or sixth time and uh, this will be new but otherwise if it is successful then you're watching this now and I thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed my first impression videos I'm going to be starting to branch out into other distributions that are not Gen 2 based just to see what else I can find out there if you guys have suggestions of distributions you'd like to see me throw on the box, try it out, see what we can do. Uh, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Until then, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy, you've enjoyed these. If it's morning, noon, or night, whatever it is, I hope you're having a good one. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.